Hi everyone and welcome back once again to Pipes and Drams where we uh, play a couple of tunes and uh, try a little whiskey. My name's Derek, these are my pipes and these are my drams. Now the tune I just played has an interesting story behind it. Its title is Hector the Hero and was written in 1903 by James Scott Skinner. Now the tune is written to commemorate Sir Hector Macdonald of Rosher. He was born in 1857 on the Black Isle near Dingwall, the son of a crofter. Now the Black Isle, contrary to what it says, is not in fact an island. It is actually a peninsula north of Inverness, bounded on three sides by expanses of water. The Cromarty Firth to the north, the Bewley Firth to the south, and the Moray Firth to the east. He is later known as Fighting Mac, and enlists as a private soldier with the 92nd Gordon Highlanders in 1870, where he rose rapidly in rank to color sergeant. Now, after exceptional bravery in the Second Afghan War, he is offered the Victoria Cross, the highest award for gallantry in the British Empire, or a commission in his regiment. And as it was very rare for a soldier from the ranks to become an officer, he chose that route and becomes a uh, subaltern uh, in time for the First Boer War in 1880. And he was captured at the Battle of Majuba Hill, which was the final and decisive battle of the First Boer War. Now, when a, an officer surrenders, he actually gives his sword to the um, to the other side. And uh, his bravery was such that General Joubert, the Commandant General of Boer forces, returned his sword as the Gordons had held their ground the longest. In 1885, he assists Sir Evelyn Wood, reorganize the Egyptian army, and takes part in the Nile expedition of that year. In 1888, he's promoted to captain and stayed on to train Sudanese troops with the Egyptian service. 1889, during the Modest War in Sudan, he is awarded the DSO, or the Distinguished Service Order, for bravery at the Battle of Toski. In 1891, he's promoted again to major after action at the siege and capture of the Modest stronghold of Tokar. He distinguishes himself in 1897 and 1898 at the battles of Abu Ahmed and at Barra. Later in 1898, he saved Lord Kitchener from certain defeat at Omjuran, leading a rearguard action with his battalion of 3,000 Sudanese troops uh, against a force of, get this, 15,000 dervish. And as a result, he became famous at home in Britain. Another young officer at Obdurin that uh, gained some uh, notoriety a little bit later on was one Winston Spencer Churchill. He's then promoted to Colonel and appointed aide-de-camp to Queen Victoria. Now keep in mind, this is a crofter's son from a farm in the Highlands of Scotland. In 1899, he becomes Brigadier General and goes to India to command a military district. At the outbreak of the Second Boer War, he's sent to command the Highland Brigade in South Africa and takes part in operations at Partiburg, Blomfontein, and Pretoria. 1901, he becomes Knight Commander of the Order of Bath. Now that makes him Brigadier General Sir Hector MacDonald. Uh, he then returns to the UK where he gets turned around and heads back to India to take command of the South District Army. 1902, he becomes Commander-in-Chief of British troops in Ceylon, which is now Sri Lanka. In Ceylon, he um, upsets a number of people, including the British governor, and is then suspected of uh, homosexuality. He was then advised to return again to the UK. The king was reputed to have, to have suggested that MacDonald 
just shoot himself. The rather more sane Lord Roberts, then Commander-in-Chief, recommends he returns to Ceylon to clear his name. Now, as part of the trek back to Ceylon, um, he goes through Paris. And after staying overnight at a Paris hotel, goes down to get his newspaper and daily croissant and realizes that the, um, his situation has been leaked to the press and it's all over the front page of the newspaper. So he returns to his room, pulls out his service revolver and shoots himself, commits suicide. Now, uh, after his death, the body is recovered by the hitherto unknown wife and son that he had. Now, the suicide of the Empire's greatest war hero caused great public shock. And his funeral in Edinburgh, which the government had tried to keep secret, was instead attended by 30,000 of his fellow countrymen. The report into the affair cleared MacDonald and suggested that his accusers were guilty of spite and jealousy and his rising to such high rank in the British Army by way of ability and not privilege. He was, after all, only a crofter's son. A very interesting story. Thank you for listening. Now, why don't we try a little whiskey? Now, today's tasting will be Calhoun Sanic. Now, the Calhoun Distillery is the youngest operational distillery on Isla. Easy for me to say. The first to be built there in 125 years and started production in 2005. It's the westernmost distillery in Scotland and also Isla's smallest. Now, Kilhoman takes its name from the local parish, which covers the westernmost part of the island. Sanig is named after an inlet on Isla's rugged Atlantic coast, where high winds and rough seas have carved into the coastline with dramatic effect. Kilhoman is a small-scale farm distillery and is the only distillery in which absolutely every element of the process, from growing at least some of the barley, to the bottling process takes place on site. Now the circular Celtic symbol seen on every bottle of Cahoman is known as a threefold symbol. The center of this symbol represents the hub, signifying unity of the three powers. In this case, the unity of barley, water, and yeast. Sanig is a vatting of Cahoman matured in both sherry and ex-bourbon barrels. In 2020, Sandig was voted Best Isle of Whiskey in the Ultimate Spirits Challenge and won gold in 2021's International Spirits Challenge. Now, Sandig is a non-age statement whiskey. It's kind of a coppery, rusty color. Uh, it's bottled at 46% ABV. It's non-chill filtered and has no added color. It's a peaty single malt that has been vatted from ex-bourbon casks from one of my favorite bourbons, Buffalo Trace, and it's kept in the bourbon barrels for 20 to 30% of the aging process. And then um, 70 to 80% of the time is spent in ex Oloroso sherry barrels. Now time for a wee taste. So as you can see the color on that, that's that sort of coppery, rusty color. On the nose, I'm getting some peat, some moderate peat, some sweet, dark fruit, um, sultanas, figs, that kind of a thing. There's a bit of nuttiness, walnuts, hazelnuts. Not getting any vanilla, not getting any caramel. It's a weak taste. A wee swally. This is rich, 
and full-bodied. There's a, a sweet, a mild sweet sherryness, a bit of uh, Christmas cake fruitiness. Um, you're still getting the gentle smoke, some salt brine. On the finish, it's nice and smooth. It's uh, long and smoky with uh, perhaps a scent of, a, a scent? Let's try that again, a hint of cinnamon and clove and uh, some bright cooked fruit. Yes. Now, Kilhoman Sanig is a lovely whiskey and definitely recommended. It's the classic Isle of Flavors and they're there in full force, but nicely balanced. As vanning of casks creates an expression where the sherry influence is supporting the wider array of spirits and peat flavors rather than taking charge. Another one that's well worth a try. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please give a like and a share or drop a comment. It really does help. Until next time, take care of yourself and those that you love. Slanch.